Welcome back to the weekly show. My next guest is a man who started playing professional soccer before he could drive. He's represented Candom more times than you can count on all your extremities. He's a member of two Candom, two separate soccer Hall of Fames. He's a former player and coach and current president of the Whitecaps FC. Bob Leonard Doozy. Bob, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. I want to start off by saying every kid growing up wants to play some sort of professional sport, be it hockey, soccer, football, or baseball. How were you able to turn pro at 14, and when did you know you could take a serious kick at the sport? Well, I actually uh, knew from pretty much the time I could think, and certainly from the time I could um, kick a ball, that um, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. It was uh, I was that young, and uh, what really cemented my love for the sport was watching England play uh, West Germany at the time in the 1966 World Cup and I was 11 years old and uh, it's a game that um, uh, England won 4-2 um, went into overtime Germany actually equalized uh, very late in the match to send it into overtime and then uh, England went on to win it and scored uh, what is still to this day probably the most controversial uh, goal ever given so that uh, then I realized okay um I uh, this is I want to play professional soccer, and um, I was able to pursue that goal by actually going to England at the age of 14 and becoming an apprentice professional with with Reading at the time. What has been the highlight of your professional career so far? I'm not so sure if there is one highlight. I I look back on on my career and um, certainly playing at the Olympics in in 1984 and. Um, losing on penalty shots to Brazil in the in the uh, the round of 16 um, uh, is is right up there. Uh, playing at qualifying for the World Cup in St. John's, Newfoundland in, in 1985, playing at the World Cup and playing against France and Michel Platini and all the uh, the French players that uh, um, were fairly well known at that time and, and still are. Um, and then I, another. Um, uh, more recent uh, notable time for me was was actually the rebirth of the uh, of the Whitecaps um, uh, at uh, Empire Field and on March nineteenth in twenty eleven you know to get twenty four thousand people out and on a beautiful sunny day and uh, and have it take place uh, at Empire which is where uh, the original Whitecaps played was uh, was something very memorable as well. The Whitecaps just announced their partnership with the Prince George Youth Soccer Association. What are you expecting the facility to do for the youth? Well, ideally, it'll give uh, the youngsters in, in Prince George uh, an opportunity to um, to work with uh, the coaches that uh, we have uh, established in Prince George. And then, uh, in addition to that, uh, we will pl- uh, pay regular visits to uh, Prince George and uh, monitor the, the kids that are there from a very young age, and my, our hope is that uh, you know, that uh, over time, you know, there are one or two players that, that kind of out, come out of Prince George and find their way through to our uh, our development program, and eventually find their way through to our uh, our senior squad. And, and I, I don't think that that's uh, unreasonable to think that that could happen. And why did you choose Prince George specifically? I think geographically, it it it, uh, it fits. Uh, a need for us and I've been coming to Prince George along with my brothers since uh, oh, uh, oh, probably night, uh, the early uh, or late to 1980s and uh, uh, we've been we held Leonard Uzi soccer camps there at that time and then they eventually morphed into uh, Whitecaps camps and so I'm aware of the, the, the amount of interest that there is in the game uh, in Prince George and uh, the amount of work that's put in by the Prince George uh, Youth Soccer Association and feel like it's a, it's a hotbed uh, for the North and, and uh, uh, a place that uh, we can establish a, a working relationship with that ideally, as I said earlier, will enable players to, uh, to, to get to the greatest heights. How long has this been in the planning stages? As a result of, of the relationships that we have in, in Prince George, um, you know, and, and in particular with Sonny Parwar, it, it's we've we've been we've had meaningful dialogue 
I would say, from as far back as I can remember. And only just recently when we started expanding to, um, to other uh, areas with the academy centers, and we're in, um, we're on the island, we're in the Kootenays, we're in the Okanagan, we're in Saskatchewan. We obviously have our main center in Vancouver and now in Prince George. And, and our hope is to continue uh, expanding the, the academy center. So I, I believe that uh, the formalization of it probably over the last you know, five, six months, there's been, there's been um, that kind of dialogue to, to establish something on a more formal basis, and, and here we are. Is there currently any talk of partnering with Toronto and making this uh, move more of a national initiative, maybe for the national team? We have uh, territories, each of the professional clubs in MLS, and our territory is from here to, uh, to Manitoba. Toronto's is a 50-mile radius uh, around their training centre, and Montreal is all of Quebec. So um, Prince George right now is, uh, is in our uh, territory, and you know, as much as we like to be uh, um, uh, sharing our, our resources, it, it, at this point, you know, we're hoping that uh, this will be a direct benefit to the Vancouver Whitecaps. And then ultimately, if, if that's the case, then the, the, the beneficiary beyond that would be our, our national teams program. And moving back to the actual fans here, how do you feel about the Southsiders and the reaction they got after the stir they caused at a local Canucks game? Well, I think what it did was it highlighted uh, the atmosphere at our games and uh, what the Southsiders and um, a couple of other supporter groups, uh, Curva Collective and uh, and the Rain City Brigade, are actually bringing to our, our, our games. And, um, you know, as, as to... The, the the stir that was uh, that, that started up as a result of the the Southsiders attending a, a, a Canucks game, uh, probably you know not for me to to talk about uh, how they um, oversee that aspect of of their of their team. Uh, all I can say is that uh, you know I've I've said all along from the time we the, the Southsiders. Southsider started up at uh, at the old um, Swangard Stadium. That it's a differentiator for us um, in North America. There there really aren't other sporting events that have the kind of atmosphere that uh, we have at our at our White Cast matches. You don't find it at hockey. You don't find it at uh, football or baseball. And um, I know that I get people uh, who go for the first time and obviously like the game, but really like the atmosphere that they're a part of. And uh, you know, we're 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 hoping to continue to to foster that type of um, of, uh, of atmosphere at our games. On the same token, why are soccer fans so different than any other sports fan with the singing and the dancing? Well, I think when you talk about passion, it, it's the passion that manifests itself, and and, and that's how it it uh, it comes out. And um, you know, for the most part, it's uh, something that. I think people that aren't familiar with with that kind of um, interaction from the fans that it's it's probably a little bit odd to them at the outset. But uh, what we're finding at our games is that uh, people that aren't familiar with it are now joining in, and we've got uh, people that want to sit in the supporters group section because they want to be a part of that that atmosphere. So uh, what we're what we're uh, able to benefit from is is the the culture. Uh, the soccer culture and the, the type of support the fans all over the, the world provide to their teams. And now we're bringing that to North America. I've got a few social media questions right now. First one is from Corey Marshall. He asks, are the Caps working towards any potential games with European teams like Madrid when they're passing through to Seattle? I've always said that uh, when we eventually play our, uh, we did play Man City um, in our, our first uh, season at uh, at Empire Fields, uh, but in terms of the new venue, what we want to do there is ensure that uh, the team that we bring in will likely fill the whole of, of BC Place. So we are very interested in hosting um, one of the the top four or five club sides in the world, and uh, it's something that um, we uh, we look into on an annual basis. As to when that will happen, it, it's difficult to say, but it, it certainly is on the radar screen. Sahil Sani asks on Facebook if you could scoop up one player in the world, no questions asked, besides Ronaldo or Messi, who would it be? <laughs> well, that, uh, I was going to say uh, 
and Ronaldo wouldn't have been one of my choices, by the way. I, Messi definitely would be. I think he's the the best player in the world, and if he can win a uh, a World Cup with Argentina, then he may be the best player of uh, of all time. Might not make a lot of sense to, to some people, but um, I love uh, Essien at um, now at, at obviously Real Madrid. But he's uh, he's uh, a player that that I, I love his defensive. Uh, qualities, and I love uh, the, the 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 way that he distributes the ball from that midfield position. He's a, a real anchor in front of the back four, but at the same time can really add to the attack. And um, he's a Ghanaian, and obviously we have a, a Ghanaian player in Gershon Coffee that uh, I think uh, with each year that goes by is is uh, is it's going to be more difficult for us to hold on to because he, I think, has the, the qualities to, to go to the highest level. Typically, when we've got a fun guest, I like to do what's called Trevor's Daily Hat Trick. It's uh, three wacky questions. So, are you game for it? Sure. Looking for the hat trick. Trevor scores! Trevor has the hat trick. First geography question is, you've been around the world. What is the worst stadium you've ever been to? The worst stadium? Well, I would have to say that that, uh, that uh, goes to Chester. Uh, and that was when I was playing at Reading in the, the actually the fourth division at that time. And um, I remember arriving at Chester and seeing uh, uh, rabbits hopping across the field and went into the changing room and it wasn't very big uh, and then the topper was uh, looked into uh, the shower area and um, there was a big hole in the wall that uh, accessed the communal bath and uh, the hole in the wall looked like it had just been uh, uh, hacked away at so there were jagged edges around the, the hole that uh, you needed to get into the bath. So that, that would be my uh, my worst experience. Next question is true or false? You look down upon people who say soccer rather than football. Not at all. Well, false from my end. I have no problem with whatever people use. Final question. You've got two out of two so far, so don't screw this up. You're a legend in the BC community, especially in Vancouver. How much longer until we see you opening up a fitness club like two other Vancouver-based sporting legends? You're going to have to wait a long time for that. Um, I have uh, uh, some fitness equipment in my uh, my home that I use on a daily basis, and that'll be the extent of it. He's a former pro footballer. He's a part of two separate soccer Hall of Fames, former coach, GM, now current president of the Whitecaps FC, Bob Leonard Doozy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you can go on Twitter, follow at Whitecaps FC on Facebook.com slash Whitecaps FC, as well as WhitecapsFC.com. That's going to do it for another edition of the weekly show. I'm Trevor McManus.